Hey, hey everybody, Z Garcia here, and today I'm taking a look at the expansion to Everdell. This is Pearl Brook. In this box, you are going to get more of what you already liked in the original game. You're going to get more cards, more cute little meeple animals. You are going to get new special events, things like that. But you're also going to get a new sideboard that explores the world of Pearl Brook, which is sort of an underwater world that is part of Everdell. And you are going to have a new character, a new ambassador that you can send out there to that world in order to trade with them. Uh, you'll have a new resource, Pearls, that could turn out to be uh, massive in the game, possibly leading you to collecting these brand new wonders worth tons and tons of victory points. So let's go ahead and take a look at it. I'm not going to explain how to play Everdell. I'm just going to show you differences in the box, what comes in here, and how the game is going to generally flow using the components in the expansion. In Pearl Brook, you're going to get a whole bunch of new stuff. You are going to get a sideboard here. You're going to get a new resource, Pearls. You have these cards that get placed onto the board, four of them. Each one gets a pearl on the back. You have 20 new cards that get shuffled into the deck of cards. You have four new sets of characters to pick from, so you could be otters now if you wanted, for example. Each color gets one frog ambassador to be used on this new board. And then you've got uh, new uh, cards that are going to go over here in the special locations, some new special events, and uh, you can shuffle those in and use them. Same thing with these. You are going to have a score pad down there, very nice score pad. These adornment cards, special abilities the players will begin with, uh, or that they can choose to trigger. And to set it all up, you've done that on the side, shuffled these in, picked your characters. You need to make sure that at least one of the special events is one from Pearl Brook. The cards will be marked with a symbol to let you know that and then you'll set up everything else. You've also got these over here. These are optional, you may use them, and they're simply placed into play to let the other players around the table know if a location you have is open. And then once you know it's uh, taken, then you could flip it over to closed so nobody has to worry about it anymore. It's a nice little visual aid to let everybody know, hey, there's something over here you might want to consider doing. So there are those. Uh, you're also going to shuffle these up at the beginning and give every player two of these and these are going to have some special abilities. They usually have something that triggers immediately and then some end game scoring. And to play these, every one of these is going to cost one pearl. So on your turn you can pay, pay one pearl and play this one. So for example, this one says gain resources equal to the cost of any one of those kinds of cards in your city. And at the end of the game, you're going to get one victory point for each one of those kinds of cards in your city. So there you go. That's pretty much what they all look like. Something now, something later at the end of the game. Usually victory points for something. So again, everyone gets two of these. You'll never get any more, but you can play both of those. And uh, you are ready to begin. Of course, I'm not going to finish setting up everything else. I'll just explain the differences. The game plays largely the same. But as you can tell, we have up here now these wonders, these 3D cardboard wonders, and they are replacing the original basic events. So these are no longer in play. You'll put them back in the box, and you have a couple of overlays that go on the board and cover up the original spots. You'll now cover them up with two of these. These are sort of uh, thin cardboard overlays that go on there. You'll match them up. And then you put the uh, monuments where they go, the wonders where they go. The wonders are going to have a cost associated with them, and they have a location that you can go to with one of your workers and claim that wonder for a number of victory points, right? So if you get the biggest one, for instance, 25 victory points, but that's going to cost you uh, quite a bit. Three twigs, three resin, three pebbles, three pearls and you discard three cards. That's huge, but it is 25 victory points. So, new things you can do on your turn. If you have a threshold for one of these cards, and you'll notice these are very similar to those basic events we covered, you can now send your ambassador to it. 
So let's say I'm playing this color, and I already have uh, two of these kinds of cards here. I can send my ambassador there. I'm the first one to do it. I'll get this pearl. And then I flip this over, and if I can fulfill it, I may do so. So in this case, this is a citizen of the deep, Bosley the artist, and it says reveal and discard three different colored cards from your hand to gain one coin, which is a victory point, and one pearl. So if I can do that right then and there, I will do so. If not, that's okay. My ambassador will just stay there. So that's a new ability. And this will stay revealed now. So in upcoming turns, uh, this can be taken again and that ability fulfilled for that reward. There's also a new open location up here where everybody's ambassador could go. And you will pay any two resources, discard two cards to gain a pearl from up here. So if you're short on pearls, that's one way to do it. Pearls are going to translate into, ideally, these wonders into your adornments, which you're going to want to play at least one of those, likely. But if you don't use it at the end of the game, each pearl is also worth two victory points. So they are very strong. So those are some of the new actions you can take on your turn. You can send your ambassador over here. You can play an adornment card. Both of those are going to be an action. As you can see, these locations here show the uh, different uh, pad on a frog there. So only your ambassador will go there. And it itself cannot go to any other location. So you're going to want to do this. And it will happen as you hit these thresholds. You'll go there even if it's hidden to get that free pearl. Uh, never mind if you can qualify for the card or not, or choose to do it or not. There's also, of course, the new locations, and there's even some that are going to give you new places to send your ambassador, such as this card here. This one is a fairy, and it lets you send someone, it's an open location, send uh, an ambassador there to copy any revealed river location. So if it's blocked, you can go to this one and copy that and do its special effect. And then you've got, of course, for the fairy, you're going to get a, a fairy ferret. So this is another new card. This little guy here, if you go, uh, when you build it, if you have at least two pearls, you're going to gain two victory points. And then as you are switching seasons, you might qualify for that as well. So you're going to want to invest in those pearls likely because they'll translate into these massive wonders here. And they certainly seem unattainable at first, but you're very likely to build at least one. Uh, the last game I played, both of the big ones were taken, so it will happen. A couple of other new cards in the 20 new cards you get. You've got the Harbor here. If you have at least two pearls, gain any two goods. Uh, this one here, the Bridge. Increase your hand size by one for every pearl you have. Also draw two cards every time you gain a pearl. So very strong card there. And uh, that's largely what's different in the game. You're still going to play the same way. You'll still have uh, all of the eight cards revealed out here. You will build up your uh, tableau. You'll still gain all of the resources and so forth. But of course, you are now concerning yourself also with the big wonders and this sideboard on the side. Now, when you're setting up these four cards face down, you are going to pick two citizens and you are going to pick two locations. You'll shuffle those four, display them. I think these are meant to have identical backs. Uh, unfortunately, they do not. You will be able to tell, especially uh, in person, which, are, uh, which ones are citizens and which ones are locations. Uh, all the locations have this bag and all the citizens this one. It's really not that big a deal for you to know that. The main difference being locations are going to expect you to pay some resources and some victory point coins for a boost and the citizens usually require cards to be discarded sometimes specific kinds of cards for a boost so there you go uh the score pad as i mentioned at the beginning is very nice it's going to give you a nice breakdown of everything that should score in the game uh, and this is a really uh, appreciated touch i like having a score pad in this game this expansion does not feel necessarily like it makes the game more complicated. There is just now a couple of other things you may do. They don't seem to bog down the experience. So hopefully that gives you a good idea of what you can expect to find in the game now with Pearl Brook mixed into the whole thing. So let's go back up top. Let me tell you what I think of the experience. 
combined with this expansion. All right, that is Pearl Brook. So I was extremely excited when I found out about this, when it originally showed up on Kickstarter. I thought it looked amazing. The base game looks amazing. So did this. Uh, there was a lot in it, you know, when I read that original announcement, went through the Kickstarter. So I was a little bit concerned about bloat, about there being so many new things that it would obliterate the your things I liked in the original one. Thankfully, that is not the case, or at least that has not been the case with me. I've enjoyed what this adds, and I feel like it retains just about everything I liked in the original game uh, as well. That's all intact. I've enjoyed being able to do the new things while maintaining all of those things I already enjoyed, already liked. So let's go ahead and go into this, all right? Thematic ties here are great. I love expanding the world of Everdell. New vistas, new locations, that sort of idea. Uh, I like the uh, Ambassador as a new piece you can send, a dedicated piece just for that new sideboard. Uh, I, it looks good on the table. The whole thing thematically comes together for me, where if you did not know, and, and if it was not two separate boards, if you did not know this was an expansion, I think people would uh, you would just be able to say, okay, yeah, this is Everdell. There's a water area in Everdell and this forest area. So I like it. The aesthetics. Looks amazing. Like I said, I think the production quality here is very, very high. The pearls are really nice. Uh, the artwork is just as uh, unbelievably good as in the original game. The only issue I have is I think those overlays are a little on the thin side. They could bend if you're not careful with them. As long as you don't bump them, you're going to be okay, but they are pretty thin. Other than that, really good stuff. Replayability. You're going to have a few new things you can focus on, so I, I like that. And there's going to be new choices that come with, with that idea. Removing the basic events is not something I miss whatsoever in this game. I think that sort of shifts over to the sideboard anyway, and those locations are taken up by the new wonders. It works well. It doesn't feel like they had to cut something out to add something in. I know they did, technically speaking, but it does not feel that way, so I like that. And the replayability is high because of all those new considerations you have uh, at hand. Game length. Feels to me about the same, which is good. This was always a game that, um, it's got an interesting feel. You, you, at first, you do a couple of things, then you have to rest, go to the next season. You feel like the game's gonna be over way too quickly, but it works out. At the end, that last season is real elastic. It's gonna take a while, so it, it pans out. I like it. Though this one, I think with the expansion, it reinforces forward planning. Those wonders that take, you know, three of this, three of that, three pearls, three carts, they take some planning. If you want to go for those, you need to make sure you are watching where you are spending your resources. I found myself in, um, in my plays definitely waiting people out to move out of a location so I could take that location to get the final piece of something over here to eventually, boom, be able to build one of those. And just be mindful, being very careful. This is a game that was thoughtful anyway, but now it feels like that's a bigger part of the pie. Uh, forward thinking, forward planning. All right, ease of play. Ga the, the game deck is a little bit bigger, and this was one of my concerns. Yes, it's diluted a little bit. I think it's also counterbalanced by the fact that it seems to me there's a little more card flow now. A lot of the new cards give you cards, let you draw cards. You are sort of burning through them a little more quickly. For example, one thing I rarely ran into before was going above my eight card hand limit and having to discard. Happened several times while I was playing with the expansion. So um, that's something that I think will help that, that general uh, issue, which is, you know, that dilution of what the deck originally was. There's cards that need to be paired. There are now 20 more cards. So yes, it's definitely an effect, but the game pushes against it. Um, I like the adornments as well. I think the adornments give you something powerful, something tangible at the beginning that you have the ability to do. You're going to want in the game at least one of those pearls. Even if you don't care, if your strategy does not involve going for the wonders, you're going to want at least one of them because 
it's going to let you play those uh, adornments, and they are powerful. They are they inform your game to a certain degree, depending on which ones you have. But they will help you get out of a jam and decide if you go for A or B or C over there. You know, so I like that quite a bit. It's a nice. It's nice to start with something that isn't just a random deal of five cards or six cards or whatever. I like being able to have something that it's, it's in my back pocket. You know, if I need something grand, bam, I play one of those for a pearl and it'll do the job. Tactics and strategy. Uh, the main thing here is, and this was one of my concerns going into the expansion. One of them was deck dilution, right? As I said, the deck would be uh, bigger. The other one was, these wonders are huge. Is this game going to become, and it seems that for some people out there it has a bit. I was concerned, is it going to become a game in which I either A, do what I originally did in the game, not worry about the wonders, or B, put a lot of time and effort into getting, oh, find a big wonder, but I've been ignoring my tableau, I haven't been building up to anything else in the game. And I was very pleasantly surprised that I was able to get the big wonders while making my way through the game as usual. You know, finding combos, getting resources, knowing when to take a worker placement spot. And yes, you want to devote a couple of moments to, okay, well, I'm, I'm close to that one. I want to get this and this, and I can shoot for that monument, for that wonder. But it did not overtake the rest of the game. And so it's not a question of A or B. You can do both. You have a lot of forward planning to do. I like that. But you can do what you did before and the new things without, I'll say, without compromising. You know, without having to, um, and you will compromise. That's what the games are largely about. you got to do this and not that. But without having to sacrifice large parts of gameplay. Very, very... Um, Pleasantly surprised, like I said, about that. Really happy about it. So there you go. Overall, very uh, much enjoyed this expansion. I think it is a beautiful addition to a game that already was excellent. And here is my bottom line. New places to explore, new strategies, and everything you liked from the original game stays relevant. This is going to get an 8 out of 10 from me. Same thing I gave the original game. Which means it's going to get a seal of approval. That is Everdell Pearl Brook. Really neat stuff. If you've played your Everdell quite a bit, you want to jazz it up, this is going to do that very thing for you. I definitely recommend it. That's Pearl Brook. All right, everybody. I am Z Garcia. Thanks for checking this out. I'll see you on the next one. Thanks so much for watching another Dice Tower video. If you enjoy our videos, subscribe to the channel for more fun, comprehensive board game coverage. Also, consider joining us at one of our events. Come to Dice Tower Retreat, a small, intimate gathering where gaming is king. Join us for Dice Tower Cruise, the largest board game cruise. Attend Dice Tower West in Las Vegas for gaming fun on the West Coast, or Dice Tower East in Orlando in sunny Florida. Dice Tower Conventions, the friendliest gaming conventions on Earth. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower.